What's going on, everybody? First, I just want to say that sorry I haven't been putting out a lot of videos lately. I've been busy with work. Um, been working like 60 plus hours a week. Um, so, just been too busy. I've had probably one day off a week at most. Uh, sometimes two if I get lucky. But today's video, however, is not going to be over that. Today's video is going to be talk. We're going to talk about the different year models and what to look for when purchasing a used or new Duramax, and like the information that I want to give you to so that you can understand what you're purchasing and what to look for um, as you're going for the purchase, and as you're looking for a new Duramax powered for you new Duramax powered diesel truck. Um, so your 2001 to 2004, it's gonna be your LB7 engine code. Um, if you know anything about Duramaxes, first thing you wanna know is, or first thing when you hear LB7, 2001, 2004, injectors. Um, injectors in these trucks were prone to falling, were prone to failing. Um, Uh, injectors were known to are known to fail, prone to fail. Um, it was a big problem. Uh, GM actually put out a ten-year or t yeah, seven-year or ten-year, two hundred thousand mile warranty on those trucks. Um, they're all out of warranty now. So if you end up buying a t buying a two thousand one and two thousand four LB seven equipped truck, um, you're already like you're in it needs injectors. There's no going to GM saying that getting them to put the injectors in, you're going to end up paying it out of pocket. And that's about a $4,000, $4,500, possibly, no, not $4,000, I'm sorry, uh, about $2,000 um, dollar job if you take it somewhere. Uh, if you do it yourself, you can get it cheaper. It also depends on which injectors you go with. Uh, stock remands versus brand new, re brand new stock versus... Uh, list goes on and on as you go up and as you go up and like percentage wise uh, like 15% 30% 45% 60% over 100% over yada 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 um, now the thing is when you do go look for the LB7 trucks ask for paperwork if they have mentioned anything about um, anything about having injectors injector work done ask for paperwork ask for proof um, you want to see the proof so that you're not getting you're not so that way you don't get screwed over um, the injectors are internal meaning that they are underneath the valve covers this is the only year models of the trucks that have internal injectors underneath the valve covers. so there's no you're not able to tell what injectors it has or if it's been replaced um, even with the valve, with injectors on the over the injectors outside the valve covers, it's still kind of hard. Um, and these trucks also are equipped with a five-speed Allison. They're decently strong in stock levels, but once you start throwing power to them, the five speeds tend to have problems. Um, and it has the same the same transmission as in the next year models, 2004 and a half to 2005 LLYs. Um, five-speed transmission, great great at stock horsepower level and torque levels once you start throwing power to them they're not really all that reliable anymore um, but the LLY also known also known around as like the redheaded stepchild in the Duramax family um, prone to have injector harness failures um, I think it's like injectors like four and eight or something or one of, one of the injector harnesses gets rubbed raw it gets rubbed rubbed uh rubbed and can cause a problem so if you ever hear like ice pick trick it, while you're down the road that's that's just one way to get the injector harness to work until you can actually go out and purchase a new injector harness to replace the old one um don't rely on the ice pick trick if you have an loi and you're starting to have injector harness problems do not rely on the ice pick trick to work all the time um also look at the turbo mouthpiece you you look in when you open the hood and you see the valley you see the truck you see the engine uh, under the hood 
Um, you got the turbo sitting dead in the middle towards the towards the cab end of the truck. Look at the mouthpiece that goes into the turbo. If it looks like it's been changed, then you're good. If not, change it as quick as you can. If you decide to buy that, L if you decide to buy an LLY, you want to change that turbo mouthpiece out as quick as you can because it's a small mouthpiece. It's a poor airflow design, poor on GM's fault, but it's something that needs to be addressed. Uh, LLYs are known for overheating. And one way to add, one way to be able to understand or know if that truck is overheated before you own it, before you buy it, is asking about water pump or radiator uh, changes. If the owner has changed out the water pump or the radiator, more than likely it is overheated. Um, that or it just had a water pump failure or it had a crack in the radiator. Uh, they'll probably tell you the story. Uh, but ask for paperwork on that stuff as well. Um, I always, always, always harp on everybody, ask for paperwork. Next year models, which is the year of this truck, 2006, 2007 LBZs, they're probably the most expensive Duramax in resale value for some reason. I'm not sure why. Uh, I would say it's probably the, probably because it's, the, it's a six-speed transmission. It's still a classic body style, and it has the most horsepower and torque at stock levels before... It, uh, with the minimal emissions on the truck, uh, meaning it, these trucks only came with an EGR cooler, which are very easy to delete. Um, these, the engines in the LBZs had a complete rod and piston design. Um, redesign for the, for the engine is an update. Um, the pistons are really strong. They're a lot stronger than the 01 to 05 uh, LB7 LLYs. The piston design on the L LB7 and LOYs though were a little bit better than the LBZ and up pistons. Um, these pistons are not that great at higher power levels, uh, 6 to 650, you're lucky, you're lucky past 650 if you don't blow a hole in your piston. Um, these trucks even at stock can put a hole in the piston. But that's also, that can also be due to injectors. Uh, if you run bad fuel, if you don't keep your injectors clean, all that kind of stuff. Um, these trucks also came with an updated CP3 as well as an updated EGR cooler. So there, the CP3 is, this is the, in these trucks, the LBZ CP3 is the one CP3 a lot of people end up going to when they do a dual CP3 on a Duramax. Um, even with a, uh, even when the LML guys do a CP3 change or swap to a CP3 from the CP4, they're swapping more than likely to an LBZ CP3 because the uh, fuel pressure regulator on the CP3 with the LBZs is a lot higher and pushes and can uh, pressurize the system more to like a 26,000 PSI system rather than a 23, 24, 22,000 PSI system. Um, so yeah, that's about the LBZ. Uh, the LMM 2007 and a half to 2010, uh, it's a, it's, the LMM is no the, no real physical difference engine wise from the LMM to the or from the LBZ to the LMM. The LMM is a uh, it's a little bit more refined tuning. It's got uh, it's got a DPF filter. So with the DPF filter, what it's going to do is when it goes into regen mode uh, to like regeneration mode to uh, clean out the DPF filter, it's going to load up the it's going to load fuel down into the seven and eight cylinders, causing uh, basically just flooding the system with fuel so that it burns the hot ash and cook and soot and everything inside the uh, inside the DPF filter itself. Um, with these regeneration modes like that can cause fuel we, we can end up having fuel in the oil system um, and it can cause your piston rings to go bad loading the fuel loading the cylinders up with fuel um, can even punch a hole in the piston due to bad bad injectors or bad fuel or getting trash in your system um, stuff like that uh, and that's basically for the for the LB or for the LMM it's it's just an updated body style, same engine as the LBZ, a little bit more refined, a little bit like five more horsepower, a little bit more torque, not too much of a difference, not too much of a changeover, um, but with a DPF filter added. 
Now, the 2011, now we're going to talk about the LMLs, the more current trucks. 2011, 2015 LMLs. Um, updated engine wasn't completely redesigned, but it had new updated internals. Um, the fuel system uses a CP3, CP4.2 pump, uh, injection pump, to pressurize the fuel. It's a very, very manipulous little. Uh, little injection pump that if even like the smallest drop of water can just ruin the system um, CP4s are also prone to failure uh, I've seen it I've seen it myself uh, just talking to people at gas stations and whatnot uh, saw some guy pull up to fill his truck up as I was filling mine up and then when he, when he went to go start it it wouldn't start we primed the system it still wouldn't start and I told him it's more than likely his CP4 is gone. Uh, he asked me what to do, and I told him you can either take it back to GM and let them put another CP4 in. Hopefully, you're lucky and you don't have to do a full fuel system. Like you won't have to put in a new, complete new fuel system from the seat from the hard lines to your injectors and everything, because that's a ten thousand dollar system. Um, or you can go the other route and not have to worry about it. And Put a C, do a CP3 swap, but that involves tuning the truck and everything else because this a CP3 uh, injection pump won't be recognized by the LML computer without proper tuning. Um, another thing with the LMLs, it's an updated, more refined ex exhaust cleaning system. You have a selective catalyst reduction (SCR) um, has been added to the exhaust right in front of the DPF filter. Um, it sprays the urea water mixture which is known as diesel exhaust fluid into the exhaust to clean up the system and keep everything nice and clean um, and that's basically it for the 2011 2015s 2015 and a half to 2016 LMLs different body style about the same engine but it has but the only change was uh, was in the transmission, and I think it was in the I think if I remember correctly, it was the internals in the transmission. Um, when you go to tune these, to, when you go to tune a 2015 and a half to 2016 truck, they won't hold as much power. The transmission at stock won't hold as much power as a 2011 to 2000, 2015 year model. Um, but once you get into tuning and like tuning your truck and everything and you're talking about transmission you're looking at rebuilding the transmission to hold power anyway because um, nobody wants to keep their stuff stock let's get real so now we're on to the 2017 to the current l5ps this these trucks i'm still learning a lot about um still trying to stay up to date on them the uh the L5P was a complete redesign from the frame up. Um, we have an all new redesigned engine. It's got brand new internals, lower. It's got a brand new, brand new lower internals and upper internals, and everything has been redesigned from the from the block. The block is still the same 6.6 .6 liters. It's a more re redefined block, um, a different composite material. Uh, I think it's still a cast. It's it's still a cast iron material, but it's a but the, the composites, the materials that are inside the cast iron that it gets, that the uh, block is uh, made with is a little bit different. Um, it's got a brand new fuel system. I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, it's a Denso fuel system, which is very similar to the fuel system found in the 6.4 liter power strokes. And if you remember anything about the 6.4 liter power strokes, people would sit there and say, well, with an exhaust, exhaust intake and a tuner you're running 700 and whatnot horsepower which was complete bs but the fuel system and the, Den the denso fuel system is actually a very 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 well fuel system um very high horsepower rating system uh you can push a lot of fuel through it at stock levels the l5p also came came stock from the factory gm finally listened to us and came from the factory with a lift pump so now we don't have to add like so now we don't have to add a fast or an air dog or a raptor or any kind of lift pump at a if you want to keep your truck stock and have better filtration and keep your injection pump happy the also also another thing about the l5p before i let y'all go 
is the tuning possibilities. Uh, we're just now starting to see tuning possible, like a new tuning coming out or tuning getting ready to come out, like banks with a, with a Derringer, um, things like that. I don't really see delete tuning coming anytime soon. I still think it's going to be another year or two, but I could be wrong. I have been wrong before. I'm not going to lie. Um, but the, uh, the possible tune, like it, just the tuning possibilities is a probable kind of thing. I'm not going to say it's impossible and I'm not going to say it's possible, but I'm going to say it's probable. It just, it, it's running, we're GM locked these trucks down, locked the computers down with the SHA 256 and uh, binary code, which is also used by our NSA and like by, by the US NSA and uh, they've been using it for years and it's a huge firewall that takes thousands and thousands and thousands of man hours to get past so that's that's the main reason why we haven't really seen tuning yet for the L5P but new changes are coming it's always a new day it's always going to be a new week a new year and a new month so change will come um, somebody will crack the code and we will be able to delete them possibly uh, one day not I don't know if it's going to be anytime soon it could be tomorrow it could be next year you never know anyways guys that's my little thing on a uh, that's my little thing on all the different trucks your different year models and engine models and everything for these trucks if you have any comments leave them below you haven't already please subscribe like the video for more content thank y'all y'all take care